welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woohoo! If you've ever felt overwhelmed or uncertain, then do we have the one step at a time show for you? Today we'll talk about breathing deep, taking small steps, and allowing things to unfold just as they should. Mm. That plus we'll talk about a COVID scare, snow in the desert, an editor hunt, format, format, what's the format? A Hollywood producer, Hollywood producer, the power of big band, roadrunners multiplying, and what in the world Ruru motorcycles and leather jackets has to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woohoo! All right. I just I just sprayed chakra seven, which is lime and rose, on our blessing our <laughs> our insightful conversation. Very good. And I just had a Ruru who usually he takes naps during shows. We did have another show earlier today, and he asked if he could not take a nap right now. He usually goes into his soft kennel, which then goes into the Tesla, and he's trying to stay under my desk. But uh, hopefully, uh, the uh, Pook star, also known as Jessica, who's in the background, can rescue us right now because he has just jumped up on a coffee table, which is usually when he is about to announce his presence. Oh, wow. And so he told me he would try to stay quiet during this interview. But once he is up on coffee table, um, it's anybody's bet. But now he's looking at me very carefully because he knows if he cock a doodle doos up on the co coffee table, he has to get down. And he knows if he doesn't, he can stay up there. So we are coming up with a, a, a rule set. We had on an animal communicator earlier this week. Yeah. And uh, one of the things she talked about with us is the number one thing that animals ask for. Any idea what it is? To talk to them. Boundaries. Oh, boundaries. They want to understand what their boundaries are, and then they feel more comfortable about everything. And so we've been working with Ruru's boundaries. She's really staring at me right now. We've been working at Ruru's boundaries this week. And one of the things is he's allowed to be up on this coffee table. Uh, but if he starts cock-a-doodle doing, he must get down right away. So oh, I get it. I had little kids. Actually, <laughs> humans also like boundaries. Little children <laughs> like boundaries, too, for the same, I presume, same reason that adults oh woo -woo. bye bye <laughs> off the coffee table off of the coffee table he is going and uh, oh jessica is coming over to take him off of said coffee table and wow. and so she is she is removing him from the coffee table he uh, complained there you could hear the complaint so he has tremendous number of vocalizations. He's uh, you know, all birds are direct answer ancestors of the dinosaurs, and he really is the closest sounding thing to any pterodactyl you've heard on Jurassic Park. Yeah, <laughs> I can hear it. Like he um, earlier, we I was hearing a noise. I'm like, what is that noise? It was like, that's <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> time here she is <laughs> Jessica is going for the coconut treats, and we will see what that does. But wow. if not, it's an interesting dance that we do, a dance between meditation, between automatic writing, between coaching sessions, between Ruru staying in and going out. We got snow here this morning. Well, actually, we had wow. snow multiple This morning, it came down as a deluge of rain instead. But he was like, Daddy, why haven't you taken me outside this morning? I'm trying to explain to your pet that I'm sorry. It's just too windy, wet, and cold. I don't think any poodle on the planet and certainly nor any rooster on the planet is going to understand that until you take him out in it. And he goes, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what was his reaction? How do you get him so he doesn't fly off? Well, he, he from what I've read, the maximum that a chicken or rooster can fly is about 100 yards. In his case, it's more like three yards. Um, so he doesn't really fly off anywhere. And as far as we've seen, he's one of the biggest roosters out there. He's a 15 pounder. A rooster is like eight to 10 pounds. Wow. And so probably because of the, well, um, engineering, shall we say, involved in the- um, Coconut <laughs> treats. Let's just summarize it to coconut treats. <laughs> My God. His skill set is not uh, flying. Well, he's, he has no fat on him. This bird yeah. is lean. 
but um, but his wings are not as wide as a true flying bird's wings. Mm. So he has shorter wings. So you may hear some clucking in the background. That is pure joy right now, as he is having a little bit of uh, cat food, um, specifically raw beef. And you don't think of birds eating raw beef, um, but he is like us. He is, he is a, uh, an omnivore. He is? I didn't realize that chickens were omnivores. Wow. Yes. So, and he absolutely loves that. So going with along with the today's theme of one step at a time, we've been learning Ruru's likes, his dislikes. We learned last week that it was 40s to 60s music. This week we learned it's actually big band seems to be his favorite. Hmm. It calms down the most. So people might hear in the background the tiniest, faintest bit of uh, uh, big band music. He absolutely loves it. And we're learning how to do this dance. How do we make life easier for him? How does he make life easier for us? Yesterday, he gloriously got to share some couch time with Jessica, where he sat down on a towel on the couch next to her, and they just camped out and enjoyed the evening together. I was already blissfully to sleep. Wow. But so, do the talons, does he have talons, and does it scratch all of your items, or no? No, he has more like fingernails. And they don't scratch any more than fingernails do. But he does have still growing in, and I get to Google and do more research on how to keep them short. He has things called spurs. Right, and the, uh, yeah, they're like sharp, right? They are sharp. His are really short, about less than an inch in length. Um, but they are used for if he was fighting another rooster, he would, I think, I haven't looked this up. I don't, I don't want to see violence of any kind. But he, he, I think, would, or a rooster would fly around backwards and then kick. Yeah. Uh, it's not his technique. It's, we treat him with so much love, it's never even a, uh, right. a maybe he could use it for a can opener someday. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and how is he faring with the roadrunners? So do, the road do they interact or no? Not closely. Um, he saw the roadrunners. So we had one roadrunner who, road who we were feeding that we called Oats. Mm -hmm. And this week we saw Oats off in the distance and we said, hey, Oats, it's, it's uh, uh, food time. And Oats came running over, except Oats was already there. What? There are now two um... Oats, where once there were one. <laughs> There's a roadrunner <laughs> that responds to the name of Oats. So we're going now. So how long has this been going on that there were actually two of them feeding instead of one? Oh, how funny. So, but, but Ruru watched and, and they've seen Ruru yesterday. Ruru was taking a walk for me. He both has walks that he does in my arms, but he also has walks where, uh, like our mailbox is a couple hundred yards away. He can walk down to the mailbox on his own and he can walk back from the mailbox on his own. And he was coming back from the mailbox and he saw the roadrunner, but he didn't interact with the roadrunner. He was, he was more focused. It's a steep little hill on, let me charge up the hill and beat daddy. Um, it's just wow. How many miles per hour can he run? Faster than me. Faster than me in a full sprint. That's all I know. Really? Wow. Because I was sprinting up the hill, the hill uh, maybe it was last week, from the mailbox, and he caught me. I mean, I was going full speed, and he caught me like I was standing still. Wow. So I don't know what his top end is. It's It's got to be in the Roadrunner family of, well, I don't know. Can I really sprint? It's, it's, it's a four-minute mile would be 15 miles an hour, so you could do faster than that in a full sprint. Maybe 20 miles an hour or something? Wow. Wow. I mean, that's, who would have thought? Because that's like... Bird. Yeah, because it's like, you know, he's powering over 10 pounds of body that he, and, and like legs that are what, this big? Yeah, and his knees are backwards. What? If, oh, right. His knees bend backwards, ours bend forwards. How does that even, well, so then he can propel fat, that would give him more propelling force. He's a toe runner, and it's like if you walk backwards, that's how his knees work. Okay. You push off of the foot. And so right. he push, 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 push. He's really, really fast, but it's a, it's a completely different motion. It does work well for him. Like his, one of his favorite things is getting up on the coffee table and then jumping off. And, and he's well suited for landing. So we'll go, and he likes that. He likes that feeling of like being a parachutist and coming in for a landing. And his knees <laughs> seem to work well for that. 
<laughs> this is the luckiest rooster I've ever seen. He, well, he, he, I hope he realizes how blessed he is to have you. We had a producer visit last week. Yeah. And uh, on last Sunday and say, look, the funds are coming in. I want to back your show. What are we going to do? What can we create together? And I was really excited. Right. I was actually a little bit conservative in the moment. Then, then, then he left, and I'm like, yay! Yeah. Um, because I, I have my own. Um, what, what would we even call this? It's so exciting and scary. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. So exciting and scary. So um, he left. After him and his wife. His wife is a fashion designer who's working on um, uh, fashion for the show, which is really, really cool. And they left, and the next day had the animal communicator on the show. And she said something to the equivalent of, um, Ruru knows that you're going to be making a new show. And he's interrupted me speaking to you right now to tell you that he's supposed to be the star of this show, that the show is all about him. Oh. <laughs> Ruru is listening very intensely right now. Yeah. And, and I think he's right. I think he came into our lives because whatever I create for a, a network show does get to have, feature him. And I have no idea what this looks like now. You know, is this a uh, kind of a, a late night kind of show where we... Or a morning show. Wouldn't it be like a morning show since Brewster is... Right? That's a good point. But I was thinking the original format was maybe where you talk to one guest for most of the time, then there are little snippets of short things um, that you... That you uh, like spiritual snacks or something. What what would make an entertaining show and where does Ruru fit in? And what was suggesting is that I even get to travel and meet with guests that Jessica and I have wanted to meet with indigenous elders for a good 10 years and like go speak with them like on the Machu Picchu or, or, or the trail to Machu Picchu. But would I have Ruru? Is it safe to travel with a rooster in another country? What does that look like? How would it work? I have no idea how this logistics work out, although there's now an image in my head. Because one of the things he told the animal communicator was um, uh, when Michael or daddy takes me for a walk, he has to remember, I have two feet. I can walk myself. Let me walk more. Hmm. And she said to him, Could you, would you be okay wearing a harness? And he said, can you make it a leather harness, like a leather bomber jacket? He wants a leather bomber jacket? How does he even know what a leather bomber jacket is? What? Picture picture a pilot's jacket. How does he know what a leather jacket looks like? I have no idea, but now I have this image into my head of a World War II motorcycle with a star on the side, with a sidecar, and him in the sidecar, vroom, vroom, and pulling up the start of the interview, he take, we take off his goggles, he's got his leather jacket on, looking a little bit like James Dean, and away we go. Oh, my gosh. I no. think he would love it. <laughs> See? He would love it. <laughs> what did your animal communicator tell you about communicating with Ruru? Because you've been talking to him. Do you speak out loud or is it like a transmission thing where like you do with automatic writing? <laughs> and if he keeps going, we will have to give him, have him take a nap. It's both. So she definitely wants or says he wants me to speak out loud to him more. Right. Uh, she wants me to uh, trust my instinct when it comes to images that he gives me and what he's saying he wants and doesn't want to trust my instinct on that a lot more. Um other things on top of that. Oh, there was discussion about automatic writing. With now, I've used automatic, Well, I've used automatic writing to communicate with loved ones who passed on and animals that have passed on. She said you can use it, automatic writing, that is, for communicating with animals in the here and now. Oh. I hadn't actually tried that one. So this weekend I get to play with that. I'll, I'll, I wouldn't say dust off. It's brand new. I'll, I'll dust off the <laughs> Uh, the automatic writing experience book and and I will um, go into automatic writing and say Rubu can I communicate with you here now I'm convinced the more I pause and listen to what he has to say the more I'm understanding and it's very much a um, a road of respect so normally he takes a nap before shows and he'll put himself in his soft kennel he knows to take a nap this time it was a, a quick turnaround between shows and I went to put him in there and he's like, no, 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 I don't want to. And I could tell, and 
he didn't want to. And so I'm saying, okay, I will respect that, uh, but I need you to stay quiet. What the animal communicator says is give him a visual now, hmm. a visual. So when I would go walking with him off leash, so to speak, uh, oftentimes he would chase my shoes. He loves my shoelaces and he's trying to establish boundaries. Who's in the pecking order where once I'm down on the ground? Mm -hmm. And I would scoop him up and pick him up. What I'm done since having the animal communicator on is now I give him a visual of him walking next to me, nice and happy, and that he doesn't need a leash and he's, he's doing all good things and he's doing that. Wow, so good. this visual communication seems to be a key. So I'm doing that now with the kitties too. Meaning um, he uh, considers him the floor his domain. And so I am, <laughs> he's dancing with Jessica right now. Oh, I wish I could show you this. He's got one wing down and she's putting out food in front of him and he's running around in circles around her. It is the, if you've ever seen Native American dancing or Native American powwow, you'll see them wearing the equivalent of wings and putting one arm down. Yeah, and, and the they other spin arm around, down. yeah. That's actually a dance, a mating dance that a rooster does. So he's doing a mating dance with Jessica? Well, he'll do it with anybody. So it's not a real mating dance, but he loves to dance. And that's how he gets cheeky with it. Wow. And so if I give him an image, going back, if I give him an image of him getting along with the kitties better, he's getting along with the kitties better. Hmm. That's My super guess interesting. is that actually works with all of us. Yeah. Wow. How interesting. You know, um, I just walked um, this week with, I, I was running around the lake and I ran into a friend of mine and she was training her dog. Um, mm -hmm. She's a dog trainer. And um, it was all about getting the dog to um, follow alongside with her, but not leading. Because if the dog leads, then like they understand that, you know, so... So basically, she was just walking along, and any time it started to lead, she just like yank. It's you know, she has like a nuzzle, a muzzle, or I don't know. It's like over his nose, and it kind of like pulls him back, which he hates. So she was just doing, but she needs to do that so that the dog understands like that's not okay. And it was like a couple times, and then the dog was like, it just was following the two of us in between, politely walking the entire time, and so. She was just saying, yeah, dogs really need boundaries. And I said, so what happens when the dog goes to the owner? And she said, you know, the dog doesn't follow the owner at all because the owner refuses to put boundaries on the dog. So the dog, and it's probably, I don't even know if the dog is happy because as you said, like the dog feels safer. Like there's a sense of safety, containment and holding with boundaries around you. But if you're kind of like, open to the open space. It just feels unsafe. Totally makes sense. An animal wants to be safe and secure. As you were saying that, you heard Ruru crow a few times. Yes. And then he just put himself to bed. He just went to sleep? He just put himself to bed. Yep. And wait, so now... He, wait, he walked over to his little kennel and put himself to bed? He walked over to his soft kennel. He put himself in it. Um, and Jessica just zipped it up. And now she's taking him out. He, like I said, it's, it's so unusual. He wants to sleep in the Tesla. And he wants to sleep in the Tesla because his job is the two Ps, procreation and protection. And if he's in the Tesla, he can't hear anything. He can't see anything. He doesn't have to worry about protecting us. He can stand down his guard. Wow. If he can hear us even in the other room, then he's going to say, let me out. I need to protect you guys. Oh, wow. And so when it goes back to this dog, what you're talking about is understanding our boundaries and understanding what our role is at any given time. Right. It's why when a dog starts going woof, 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 at another dog and you pull on the leash, what he's hearing is, I'm trying to protect mommy. Mommy's pulling on the leash. Therefore, mommy is scared. Therefore, I need to do even more that I can to protect mommy because this is a real danger. Oh, interesting. Wow. Fascinating. And so animals are here to serve with us. They have their role that they want to play. We have our role that we want to play. We're playing the role of mommy and daddy for, for him. He's playing the role of protector of us. And so we get to work with that and establish firm boundaries and understanding rules and sub rules so that it is easier for him to be able to let down his guard. Mm -hmm. Easier for the dog to know, oh wait, very clearly, if I go in front of my mommy, I'm gonna get a little bit and that doesn't feel good. Oh, she wants, this is where she wants me to walk. 
How cool is that? Right. You know, it's interesting. I know this sounds unrelated, but it really is related. Um, I um, have been, I got a shamanic astrological reading. And so this is, it's like, this is like a big epic two years for me. So every 29 years you go through a Saturn return. And so in May, I'll be going through my second Saturn return. And um, in addition to that, Saturn is, is conjoining Jupiter, which is like a big deal because it doesn't happen very often. And so it, it creates a certain kind of energetic magic. And so I have a Saturn return. The Saturn, Saturn and, and Jupiter, are, or Jupiter are in the house of Aquarius, which is my sign. My birth sign is, my sun sign is Aquarius. And the, the sign... Um, that's my sun sign and my moon sign, I guess. The opposite side is um, Leo. And the moon, this uh, full moon coming, upcoming, is um, w- is the full moon of Aquarius shining its light upon the moon of Leo. And anyways, it's just, there's just this mega earth movements happening around me at the same time. So I had this reading and... Um, in your um, Saturn return, it's time for you to investigate um, what you, it's a time to do severe recapitulation. Like, what is it that you want to leave behind? What is it that you want to bring forward? And as I was doing that, I was doing my own, my own automatic writing. And it was, and I was talking about my kids who just left. So we're empty nesters yet again. And I, and what, what was so wonderful about them being here is I got a sense that they're adults, you know, they're no longer little kids. And I've had nightmare after nightmare, like including like Monday night, Tuesday night, last night. And my dreams are the kids are eight to 10 to 12 years old, right around that age. And I have forgotten to pick them up. You know, I've forgotten to do something for them and they're all by themselves in the world and what's going to happen. And, and I'm like, you know, I'm someplace and then we need to be on the flight, but they're with their dad and I'm worried, like, how are they going to get on the plane? Or I'm just having all these dreams, recurring dreams about the same kind of content. And it's related to when they're younger, like Ruru, like you need to have really clear, they need to feel safe they need to be attuned to so attachment parenting or attachment roostering would <laughs> if the same applies it's like making sure that you're I'm trying tuned. not to be a helicopter parent yeah <laughs> but he well, is the loudest creature on the planet <laughs> well at, the, at this juncture it's like you're attuning and, and feeling into what they need you're recognizing and value that they have needs that are separate than yours and you're respecting those needs right he's like I can walk by myself and you're giving him boundaries, but in a way that he feels safe. I know you want to say something, so please tell me. No, no, no. I, I, I completely agree. It's, it's a balance. You need to give him set boundaries and you have to allow him to individuate. If he's, I, I had a service dog, Sawa, um, who was a, uh, a Brittany. And when I had my coyote and Brittany together, um, she always defaulted to what the coyote was doing. Mm. Once she, once coyote passed, pumpkin passed, and <coughs> Sawa was on her own. And Sawa got to really had a second, they, they had been bonded, not at the hip, but well, I guess walking at the hip. But for 15 years of their lives, they had been completely bonded together. When pumpkin passed away, Sawa actually had a full chance to come into her own. She could really express her likes, her dislikes, and one of the fascinating things that we learned, for, for instance, was if you went to a corn maze and she had to stay by your side, her kind of tail was kind of down, she's in, she's in work mode. If I said, you fi- find our way through, Sawa, you guide us through this, she lit up, her tail's up, she is like, woohoo, because she got to express herself, she got to, to be her free full self. And so that's the balance that I believe that you're talking about. Yeah, and so what the, my kids are at the age where the, it's, it's kind of an ongoing process of letting go. And um, it's interesting because 
oddly, not surprisingly, I was just talking to a client and I was read and just had a workshop that I attended where they were talking about individuation and the important to, you know, a lot of the spiritual practices are about like, um, you know, it's all empty, going into nothingness, becoming non-dual. Those are kind of like the highest spiritual aspiration is to have that happen. And, you know, it's about individuating, becoming an individual and then being part of the collective. But if you are, don't have a really clear sense of identity yourself, then it's, you go, you like fade away, right? You need to actually have a, a clear sense of self-worth, self-efficacy and self-definition, because if you don't, you can't individuate. And if you can't individuate, then like, you're not like you're not bringing your full self to the collective and we all cannot benefit from the unique gifts that you have to bring. And so um, in, in that spirit, I've been thinking about my kids like, you know, they actually, you know, what does this mean now? Like there are six, both of them are almost six feet tall. So I have two six feet guys who you know, <laughs> pump iron yeah, all the time. Awesome. I'm five, five at on a good day, um, sometimes five, four, and three, and three, four and three quarters. But like, who's protecting him? <laughs> like, what am, what am I thinking that I'm actually physically protecting them anymore? Let's get real here. So it's about like, what? How am I protecting them? What kind of protection do they need, and what is appropriate at this juncture in their life, so that they can develop themselves, individuate, and become their own, and like explore enough to figure out who they are like so Ru knows like I can walk all the way to the mail you know in the mail mailbox and that's okay like I have the freedom and the ability and the wherewithal and the self-efficacy to like walk to the mailbox and come back and and dad's there with me and like I feel safe but it's it's really interesting that you're going through what I'm going through with my kids and that I just wrote about, I mean, it's just, Maybe it's kind of funny. Maybe we need to write a book, Rooster Parenting. <laughs> Rooster Parenting. It's the same with dogs, roosters, humans. I mean, it's the same thing. It's been, um, that astrological reading, it's many, many things occurred, but that was one of those things, is an investigation of um two things, my relationship with my kids and then my relationship with my husband. Because I think I, when I came back from the Camino, I had said that my husband and I were like, well, we don't have to be together. Everything. We don't have to be together. Are we choosing to be together? Because let's get real. Like we had three years together when we were in our 30s. Um, we had 25, you know, 21 years with kids. And then that, so like, and we probably have another 40 years with just ourselves. So do we want to do this journey together? It's really, really hard to ask that question. And, you know, a couple of years ago, we we're like, yeah, we do. We have so many common interests and, you know, there's a soul connection. But I think it was important to ask, but we're going through, as you're going through your Saturn return, looking at, at what you want to let go of, you know, behaviors that you did before, but that no longer serve you. And I was starting to happen in the Camino and was truncated when the kids were back. <laughs> we were Hi, no longer we're back. Yeah. So, so we're kind of restarting that all over again and like thinking about um, our relationship. So that's been um, a challenge. It was very, very interesting because we got this sh shamanic reading and it, it was like um, someone just came in and like, um, actually we had a, a feng shui guy do this once. He came in and he's like, this carpet needs to move here. And he took the carpet and went, Whoop! and there was like dust flying all oh. over the place. And it was like, oh my God. And he moved all, everything around in our room. And it was like. That is so disconcerting. It was. And, and, and a, clearly a violation of personal space, <laughs> even though you called him in. That's a violation right It there. was. I was like, I, I remember just like him leaving and we were just like, because huh, huh, so much of the energy in the house just shifted around in such a strong, I wouldn't say violent, but in a strong, unexpected way. And we didn't really know what hit us. That's exactly what happened with a shamanic <laughs> astrological reading. It just like, like just shook up and anything that, 
I think it was like a tr it like triggered both of us in all these different ways. And and I was thinking about our conversation last week, where we were talking about you know sometimes triggers and hardship are ways in to dig deeper. And um, and so we were sh like about for a day we were just like after this reading <laughs> and like I was already sh shaken up from my own like oh you have this like sh you know whatever Saturn return and you have like various orchestrated Jupiter things happening all over the place in your chart and I was like oh my gosh you know <laughs> and so yeah so it's been kind of so the idea of breathing deep and taking small steps and allowing things to unfold as they should really, um, which is the theme of the show, really resonates for me um, in a completely different way. But yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, these are really deep personal issues that I've been diving into. It's so cool. And it definitely, we, we do mirror our past. I like the term, although it's a bit, a bit strong, severe recapitulation. <laughs> because we, we are here. We had our three miscarriages. We had our time in the road. We had our fire. We got here, we've been very grounded, but it's almost been a safe space to, we'll call it fight. Yeah. And, and, and the fight is about what do things look like moving forward? What do they want them to be? Uh, Jessica's convinced that one quality interview over two less uh, good interviews, but where we could really ramp up that one quality interview would allow us to breathe more. We're finding our YouTube events with me on the mic alone are tremendously taking off. We need to get, we get to get, we everything to get a new editor and a new editor yesterday mm. for the show. Oh, you found one? No, no, we haven't. Well, okay. Well, we, we interviewed one earlier this week. We're waiting to see a test result for one of the, um, the top uh, female singers and entertainers in the world who wow. wants to work for the show. So nice. if his work looks good for us, we've seen him do work with Oprah and stuff that's just amazing. So we've got to figure it's going to work. Right. Then then we'll bring him on board. And if not, we have these others in the queue. We're trying to figure this out. But it's really a question of who are we when we grow up? What do we want this to look like? What's this vehicle look like? I'm not comfortable going to one show. Well, we need to be at one show because I'm not comfortable doing this much work. This is... You can say it's it's a disagreement between two people, but it's not. It's two wolves on one person's shoulders. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, what, do, what does my life look like? What, do, what are my values? What is most important? Where are my fears? Where are my wounds? What are my concerns? And then you throw it all together, which is your 29-year Saturn return coming up. Yeah. And so to me, the taking small steps is saying, all right, this this scares me here, but let's step into it and see what happens. This right here, I have no idea what it's going to look like, but I'll step forward and give that a try. And this allowance, once the dust of your carpet has settled, saying, all right, how does that look over there? How does that feel? Yeah. Well, and some, you know, I, um, the other thing that happened to me this week, well, I think I told you a couple of weeks ago, I landed in the emergency room and I had like lost, the, you know, all this stuff. And so I was like numb, couldn't feel anything, lost my taste. I wanted to make sure I wasn't having a stroke. Um, and they had suggested an MRI and, you know, I was like, I really don't want an MRI, but I'll, you know, and I talked to my doctor, I'm like, are you sure I need one? Cause I'm not feeling numb. I don't really, she said, yes, go get the MRI. So I went and I had an MRI. I had like an ultrasound for some female issues that I needed to resolve that they asked me to do this summer. I did not. I had a breast exam. Um, they thought that perhaps some of the symptoms that I've been having could be a result of COVID. So I got a COVID antibody test. So I, I got in there at 12 and left at four and just went from one. Oh my God. And your blood sugar had to be through the floor at that point. <laughs> I, was just, oh, I had like else? a snack beforehand, but I was going through and um, I, my friend had told me, I, I have never done an MRI. And so I talked to a friend of mine who's done several MRIs. And I, I, my image of the MRI was like in the movies where it's just like long white tube and you're just like stuck in this really confined long white tube. 
And so I talked to a friend of mine, he's like, and I was like, I'm trying to figure out if I should take the meds or not. Like the, the, it's Halcyon, which is like, I don't, I really don't like taking any medicine. So I thought, well, I don't really want to take Halcyon. Yeah, and it's I, interesting because I've had a bunch of MRIs a long time ago. Yeah. And I just considered it an opportunity to meditate. And it's a, but you're just like. <laughs> and, and I would have been fine with that, but I'm claustrophobic. So I wasn't sure if that would work. So I. I just thought, okay, I have to decide. So I just thought, okay, I'll just take the Halcyon, which just makes you kind of drowsy. I mean, I don't really even know if it did anything, but I went into um, the MRI and I told them that I had, I was claustrophobic and they, it was like going into a high end spa. First of all, like they were, would you like a blanket? And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, um, no, thank you. And they're like, um, would you like aromatherapy? I'm like, yes, I would. <laughs> So have, they have this little and patch that they give you that has like aromatherapy. Then they put a headset and they're like, what kind of music would you like? And I said, oh, I would like classical oh, music. See, I, see, I've never had this with that. I didn't get the music effect. Oh. Oh. It, it, it's like, and now they have these, you know, fabulous noise canceling headsets. So I went in there and they have this helmet. It's part of the headsets. They have a helmet kind of thing that allows you to visually see outside into the technician's place. And, and they're all wired up. So they're talking to you the whole time. And so I'm, I'm in this thing all worried about it. I had been worried about this for a week because I just really did not want to do it. And it was like, you know, I mean, it was really loud, but it was so much more luxurious <laughs> than I thought. So five-star MRI. It's a five-star MRI. I know, exactly. I'm like, where's the sparkling cucumber water? You know, like, <laughs> was that coming afterwards, before, and when's the foot massage happening? So anyways, it was really quite pleasant as an MRI. And, and actually, they don't have you going in tubes anymore. It's like this big open apparatus, which I did not know. I wouldn't have been free, as freaked out, but... I have, I got a good, clean bill of health on my MRI. I did not have COVID after the last, in the last yep. three months. I, my like female reproductive stuff looks good. You know, I mean, it was just like, and, but, but here's the small step is like some, and I was just talking to a client about this is that sometimes there's so much fear of the unknown that that fear of the unknown just drives us into not taking any steps and, and just, had I not got the MRI, I think I would have still been like, well, do I have a brain problem or a brain injury that I need to be? But just like taking, being brave, taking the MRI, taking Halcyon to see that what that was all about. And just all these little small steps allowed kind of a knowing to occur and just a calming down. So I don't know. I That was my medical version of what we're talking about today. And there was a ton of deep breathing that was happening as well. We had a, uh, a worker, I don't think I mentioned last week, I might have two weeks ago, we had a worker come into the house. It was supposed to only be for five minutes. It's, right. Turns out it was for half an hour. He tested positive with COVID. Oh, uh, I didn't realize that. Oh, no. That's, uh, but no, that's 16 days now. And Jessica was all concerned this weekend. She's like, I, I, I feel something in my chest. It's really sore. Um, she had just done some pull-ups her first time in six or eight months. It's only a couple pull-ups, but it was some pull-ups. And she's yeah. like, but my chest is sore. But we just breathe into everything. Go take all the supplements in the world. Relax into the situation. And very fortunately for us, we came out the other side. No problems at all. Didn't turn into COVID. So you didn't take a test? But you didn't take a we COVID. didn't take it. There was no. Uh, that was as bad as it got. Was she felt like she might have had the most mild cold, oh. and so no, we're just totally cool, totally calm. We we isolated ourselves for 14 days. Uh, didn't didn't go exposing ourselves to anybody just in case. Once we found out, I guess at that point it was 11 days left when we found out or something like that. Um, but it was a matter of how chill can we be about this? Mm -hmm. How totally chill can we be rather than tightening up because you got one experience in the MRI had you gone to freak out land right it would have been a very different experience yeah 
But just breathing deeply, like you mentioned, and it's like, okay. And they did such a beautiful, like you said, five-star experience. Thank you, Kaiser Permanente. Um, they did such a wonderful job with all of it. They made it so, so easy and pleasant that, it, you know, even though I spent the whole day, my body was tired. Like, even though mentally I was like, I'm fine, that night I just passed <laughs> Like at eight o'clock, I was gone because I think your body, like, I think that I'm realizing as I'm getting older, our bodies are tired. Like our mind may be like ready to like read a report or watch a Netflix show. But my body is like, you have like prodded, poked, squeezed me in ways that I never thought was imaginable. <laughs> like, good night. And I was out. And, at eight. and there's a fight or flight response. The body has a wisdom to it. Yeah. It knows what's going on. Yeah. There. It's like you could you can do whatever you want. You can turn on that Netflix show and think you're going to see this, but like good night. <laughs> but I'm taking you down. Um, the other thing that was really nice to even start this is actually I took this. I had four massages <laughs> on Saturday. I took. I think I told you about this. I was taking a class in Chinitsong, and it's like this Taoist. The Taoists believe very much about. Um, vitality is created by moving your organs around. So the motility of the organs and movement is like important to get chi and movement and proper functioning of all of your internal organs. And so this was a massage to focus on the water element. And so I was just, I basically, and, and it's meant for self-healing and like you do these massages for yourself. You're not, it's like, this is supposed to be something that the Taoists did um, not to go to massage here, so just do it themselves. So I went to the class, and um, I was it, there were four people, four students, and I was one um, that the only one that didn't have any massage background. All the rest of them had massage background. So sorry for other people I gave massages to. I tried my best, but I basically got like four professional massages. <laughs> Or more, like, see, oh, yeah, four professional massages over the course of, like, a four-hour period. It was awesome. So I think that helped prepare me for that Monday. Totally. It's one of the things we're looking forward to as we get on the other side of, of COVID here is is massages again. Yeah. And, and lots of them and lots of TLC. I've been doing a lot of Epsom salt baths lately. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. But it's it's calming on the bottom body, and then that calms all systems down. Well, I got this book on. Um, it's called Chini Tsung, and it's all about self massage. And so I was just basically practicing. I got a professional Chini Tsung massage, but I knew enough about how it worked. Then started practicing on myself. Then started practicing on my son. And then now, after taking the class and practicing with my husband, and it's pretty, it's really doable. If you and Jessica want to try it, I'd highly recommend How it. How do you it spell great. it? C H I N E I T S E N G. Um, there's a gentleman that, called Montak Chia, and he is someone who studied the Taoist healing arts. And this is a, a compilation of all these massages that you can do for yourself. So. Um, when I was getting hives, it has to do with um, detoxification. And so there was like specific massages that they show you how to do it in the book. And I mean, it was great. And I don't think, I don't think you can harm yourself unless you're pressing really hard, which is hard to do anyways, because you're pressing on yourself. So you're not going to press too hard. How um, do you spell Montauk Chia? M-A-N-T-A-K-T-A, Montauk, M-A-N-T-A-K-C-H-I-A. I'm sure you can interview him, Michael. Well, I'm looking him up right now, and I want to learn about these massages, and I will get something right away, and I will practice with Jessica. And, and They're really see, quite lovely. See what we can do, because I, I've, I've always felt, shut off the Netflix, go give your partner a massage. It's and so great. It really has been wonderful. And, and I will say that I've massaged a scar away my... My um, menstrual cycles are back to like when I was 20. I mean, there's and like I'm sleeping better. Like there's just a whole bunch of health benefits that are happening as a result of this and other types of things that I'm doing. But I'm, I'm definitely viewing the massage as part of the healing process. Because if you think about it, your organs are stuck with the fascia in a certain kind of configuration. They don't have a chance to like 
move around like they're supposed to move around. So this is just so I uh, you may find that you you have a whole bunch of health benefits as well. They're meant for longevity practices. And and the uh, the, the the fascia is making me think again. Uh, I go on again, off again because I know that we're moving approximately April, and we'll be back in an RV at one point too. And so I would like less stuff, but I yeah. love rebounders. And rebounders are awesome for fascia and moving things around. Really? So I was just talking to someone who was telling me about a rebounder, and he said he has, like, the best Swiss rebounder on earth, like, whatever. But he said it was really good because he's going through chemotherapy, and um, he is trying to detox his body. And he said that this rebounder is unbelievable for um, kind of clearing out the toxicity in his body. What is a rebounder? So a rebounder is a glorified mini trampoline. It's a mm. two and a half foot wide or three and a half foot wide or four foot wide, maybe mini trampoline. The fancier ones use uh, bungee cords to give tension rather than springs. It does feel a little bit better. Um, and you hop up and down. There's all sorts of workouts you can see online. It's a zero gravity, zero impact activity. It works the lymphatic system. It gets all of the fluids going. Um, it boosts the immune system. It helps bring, build stronger muscles, stronger connective tissue, stronger bones. And, and the list of benefits goes, there's book after book after this uh, on this. The list of benefits goes on and on and on. And it's fun. That's the thing. It's so fun. do you like you watch TV a- and just like rebound? You could. Um, uh, it, when we had our, our last house where the TV was up high, so to speak, you could. Having the TV down low, then you see it, and then you're up. Then you see it, then you're up. <laughs> but I've also been known to put a rebounder out on the deck. I just look at nature. And you're bouncing up and down, and it's fun. And there's all sorts of different movements that you can do to strengthen things and strengthen those joints. I think I'm going to go buy one this weekend. Yep, probably so. Um, it is fun, and it's easy. And what's great is... Not almost none of us move enough. Right. And I am doing much better since we left Colorado at kicking myself out and kicking myself out. Now I'll get for a nice mountain bike ride in in about an hour here. Actually less than that, about 40, 35 minutes. I'll get a, an hour mountain bike ride and then have another meeting. The nice thing about the rebounder is I could finish an interview with you. I could take my rebounder out of the closet or in the living room or whatever. And within about 10 seconds, I'm doing a workout. Wow. In the house, no setup, no anything, bounce, bounce, bounce. Smile, 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 fun, 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 put on some music, spin around, dance on the thing. And then when I'm done, call it good. And there's no work, there's no cleanup, there's no anything, there's nothing I need to do. It's self Wait, I don't understand. Why does it affect your lymph system? Because you're just shaking everything around? Because the lymphatic system doesn't work on the heart to bring the uh, lymphatic fluid around. Oh. It works on the pressure of your muscles your muscles acting as a pump. It's why years ago when I wrote Barefoot Running, when Jessica and I wrote Barefoot Running, we learned that the feet act as a second set of hearts. Mm -hmm. Your bare feet on the ground, as they are getting acupressure points, as they're moving on the ground, start to fire the muscles of the feet, which squirt the lymphatic fluid back around so that it can be cleared out, so it can detox. Mm. So when you're on the rebounder, fire release, fire release, fire release, you're getting the whole lymphatic system going, you're clearing out the gunk, and you're basically taking the burden off of the immune system, which then can go stronger and is now available to do other things rather than trying to fight to clear out the lymphatic system. Okay, I'm going to get a rebounder. I think I need to get one. Will you send me a link if you find one that you really like since you probably know what to do? I have one. So I I have gone typically one step below the best because it's, it's, it's an exponential price increase and I haven't tried the best. So I'm okay with less than the best. It's about doing the workout. Right. So I'll send you a link to that with the one that I've been, I've been enjoying. Um, is it leaps and bounds? I'll, I'll get it for you. Okay. Um, but yes, absolutely love it. Wow. Exciting. Okay. Wait, but why were we talking about rebounding? Cause you were thinking that you're going to do that anyways. We were talking about rebounding because it had to do with something to do with the immune system, which had to do with the self massage, which had to do with the, uh, the uh, Chinit uh, song, and which had to do with the MRI, which had to do with the class that you were taking, 
which had to do with step by step, which had to do with fear, which had to do with your uh, uh, Saturn return, which had to do with Ruru, which had to do with us having a show today. <laughs> Thank you for knitting it all together. What have we, have we, I think we've, con- we've cleared our whole thing. I think we've talked I think, about I think, everything. I think we've got the works here. And it's just a matter of, you know, everything that we went through here is just step by step. If we just go into this present moment and go, wow, this is overwhelming, this is scary, this is this, this is that, let go of the label. Just step forward into it, whatever is going on in your life right now, whether that's an MRI, whether it's whatever. Um, and, and like ourselves, going through the lovingly duking it out of what, what's the show going to look like in the future? Right. And it's, it's a loving process of, of, as you call it, severe recapitulation. How are things going to change? And even that, as the fear comes up, and that's what we're really talking about, as the fear comes up, go, okay, recognize the fear, see the fear, feel the fear. That's okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> what Woo-hoo! That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got, too. All right. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and... CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Say, be well, have fun, crow a little bit. Crow a lot if you need to. <laughs> Take those steps forward. Have fun with it. Do your own severe recapitulation. Let's take the word severe out of there. Recapitulation. Gentle. (laughs) Kind and gentle. And Jessica and I are going to have kind and gentle discussions. Actually, I'm really excited about a new editor. I'm really excited. I have no idea what this is going to look like. And it's scary and it flip-flops the belly. That's what we're talking about. Shine bright. Yeah. (laughs) Woohoo!